Mark. There we go. This is the NeoBooks call for Monday, April 22, 2024. Earth Day, first day of Passover, first day of Trump's trial uh, actually <laughs> happening. So, so many interesting things today. <laughs> wow. Yeah. The, yeah, I didn't realize. Uh, yeah. Those last two, especially. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so as I was saying, I went to the, it was, it was also called Earth Commons, I think. Funding the Commons? Earth Commons. And fun, yeah. funding the Commons and, yeah. and Earth Commons. So they had two conferences at the same location. Um, somewhat separated, but if you bought into one, you had access to the other. And so, oh, that's great. Some folks uh, were jumping up and back, uh, yep. back and forth, I should say. And um, uh, Rick, uh, Jose is talking about the funding the Commons and Earth Commons conference that he attended last week. How are you doing, Rick? Doing well, thank you. And yourself? Excellent. Good. Good. Um, anyway, uh, I don't want to make this a long story, but um, so they they were upstairs. They were talking Earth stuff, which was, you know, how do we do? Um, David was there. Um, oh, cool. Uh, how do you how do we do more eco gen regeneration? Blah 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 blah, and, and some really good presentations. I really really enjoyed them. Um, they on downstairs they had basically crypto one day and ai the second day hmm. um, and so that was uh quite interesting spoke to a fella from australia i believe might as well be New Zealand, I don't remember, um, who was working on something somewhat similar to this. Mm -hmm. um, and he's kind of doing it in the data space more than the book space. Um, so he knew um, what, uh, what we had talked about. What was it called? The... micro docs or something like yeah that. yeah micro pubs micro micro pubs yeah so he knew about that and he, he his work was was derived from that to some degree do you have or, a or tied a, to it a link or a name i I'm, <clears throat> I'm trying to reach out to him to grab some okay. stuff because we we exchanged the number but i haven't been able to get a hold of him all right um and then there was also this library which you may know about but i didn't the society library.org we, we know it well yeah okay uh, uh jamie joyce is a friend um she's been doing great work uh in the free jury's brain calls which happen later on mondays uh one of our participants has been uh, on a project for the society library so uh, there's a bunch of interesting sort of intertwingles there because mm -hmm. i saw very much a, a connection between certainly the way i was thinking about how nuggets are backed up and supported and having a lineage, if you will, um, of, of, of topics. And, and it sounded based on what I saw, it sounded like a very consistent way of thinking about um, having claims and having supporting uh, views and, and that kind of stuff. Um, and so at least the way she positioned some of the things that she was working on. And so I was, I was, um, it was a good day walking out of there and thinking, oh, this kind of supports what we're talking about. Yes. And um, there's, there's very nice resonance and I, but I don't know how much overlap between the things that they're focused on and the things that we're trying to do. And, and I think Jamie and I were trying to figure out how to make, bring that closer uh, Mark Antoine, the fellow I was talking about, who's doing work for them, he's working on a project called Claim Miner, which is very specifically about how do you represent claims, assertions, arguments, rebuttals, all that kind of stuff. In a, in I know a, Mark Antoine. Yeah, okay. in a, in a deeply technical way, he goes he goes way deep on this stuff. 
Uh, so he's he's building out something around that for society library. Sounds but, cool. Okay. Yes, it sounds cool. Uh, one thing that um, you know the, the issue of overlap, you know, and I think this is such a critical thing. I I see it like a Venn diagram with lots of circles, so to speak, about where people are in this sort of emerging space. And um, you know, I, actually, I wanted to get some clarification from you, Jerry, about your sequence of the work you're doing, because I want to I want to propose an idea of maybe inverting what I heard you say maybe last week or the week before, which was focusing on the book on trust and then thinking about the neo book. Um, if if we if you if you think about uh, the notion of sort of like overlapping circles of a sort of sophisticated. Um, you know, uh, a Venn diagram, um, you know, and I don't want to go over this, but it, to me, this is just highlights it. And I, I'll be direct with you, which is sometimes I feel like I have to work through your brain to get to my space. And so, you know, and the issue of metaphors is just a case example of that. And so for me, it raises a larger issue of what is the governance for developing neo books. And what are the premises upon which you create this sort of middle ground, so to speak? I wouldn't call it a commons, but a middle grounds where we can see our differences in a way, just you know, using the principles of sociocracy, where you agree to disagree, and that you and then you let those disagreements over time sort of emerge in such a way you get a sense of which direction you're going to, because that's the nature of, of uncertainty. Um, and the reason why I bring that up is because. I think with clarity of what the governance of the neo books are, um, then, you know, I would suggest, you know, thinking about the governance and then people can say, okay, do I, can I live with this governance? What is it? And do I want to be part of that party? Um, and focus on that and then think about the trust because, you know, we all come with our own mindsets and our own frameworks and, you know, that's inevitable. You can't not, not have them. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, and the same things with metaphorical perspectives. I just got an email from somebody said, oh, I went down your rabbit hole. And I thought, whoa, okay, that's very interesting, use rabbit hole, because I'm trying to blow them up, you know? <laughs> and, you know, so people come with a different perspective. So I just kind of, I just sent this message just before this call. I said, maybe you should go back and use AI, read the section on metaphors to see whether you get a different perspective or not. So um, I'm, I'm just throwing that up because for me, uh, I love the idea conceptually, but I think we have, you know, uh, different implicit assumptions about what it is. And unless we make those explicit, then it's more difficult to know what level of participation I want to feel part of. Um, and so if, if it's more of a facilitated centered framework, that has its merits. There's no question about it. Mm -hmm. uh, but for me, that doesn't that doesn't resonate with me. I, I'd much rather have a group centered process uh, in terms of affecting the governance. So these are all choice points, and people can come and go in whatever directions they want to go. But I just wanted to put that out there because I think the most important thing is really creating a sort of a inclusive framework about what conceptually the, the emerging sense of what it could be. And I'll give you two contrasting points. I really love the way that uh, that, that uh, Klaus does his his stuff, and his focus uh, I see predominantly more on nuggets, which is great. And we can't; everyone has to agree we have to have better verification of facts. Yada yada. Uh, our assertions need to have something backing it up instead of people just, you know, bullshitting. Um, and so, you know. How, how can we go beyond the sort of content metaphors to the process metaphors to the purpose metaphors, which I described in a, an evolving blog post, because I think they're overlapping. And it's important to be clear about what metaphorical frameworks we're dancing between, because sometimes people just get locked into one metaphor. I'll give you an example. I was just on a call. I just wanted to pop in on Earth Day to hear what um, um, Terry Stein, is it Terry Stein, the, the California was it Stein? What's his name? I'm thinking of blanking on his name. The guy who stood for uh, as a presidential candidate. I'm 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 getting my I'm get, I'm being a bit of a muddle-headed wombat here. But anyway, I just went in there, and he's written a new book about um, the war on climate change. Hmm. 
you know, I'm thinking, Jesus Christ, can you not get out of that metaphor? I understand you want to win the game, but, you know, what about living with nature and harnessing the power of nature, you know? And he and I started listening to it, and they were all into this sort of mindset of winning the game, you know, which, uh, you know, uh, does, in a certain context, can be very helpful, but... <laughs> For, for wicked problems, it doesn't cut the mustard. Anyway, there you go. It's part of the problem. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's part of the problem. I agree with you. We've got to get out of our reductionist frameworks. And, you know, war and sports metaphors are common metaphors that people live by, and it doesn't help. So there's my rant at the beginning of the session, Jerry. So <laughs> take it with a pinch of salt. Well, that was a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and thank you for that. I, I, I think I only half understand what you mean by sometimes I have to work through your brain to get to my space. The thing you said at the, at the top of your comments. So I would love for you to explain that in a different way, or again, if, if in some way, if you can, um, uh, and, and I want to agree generally that, um, we need to find some way to find a higher level general agreement on what these things are. Uh, and have enough flexibility in the model that we can represent or achieve these things in different kinds of ways. And we're trying to do that, but it's, re it's really kind of hard, uh, you know, because we're kind of inventing this as we go. We're, exactly. uh, we're kludging it. Um, and then maybe a reason why you have to go. And, and when you said I have to go through your brain, I, I think you mean my external software brain. <laughs> Uh, not my internal brain, but you could have meant the internal brain because that would equally make a sensible sentence out of what you said. Um, but but for me, I'm trying to find other people to play with who have externalized what they believe in in ways that are very webby and decomposed like my brain happens to be. Mm -hmm. uh, and and that's the that's a mode of play I really, really like. And I got to say, uh, there aren't that many playmates because very few people are thinking or constructing things that way. And I should take that as a, as a, as a lesson. Um, but I'm trying to... So when we get down to the level of arguments and support and claims and all that, yes, 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 yes. I don't do that formally, but I have all those like piece parts in in what I what I curate, right? And I'm and I'm thrilled with that. Uh, and for me, nuggets are much smaller than I think they might be for other people. I think I think nuggets are are, are smaller and self contained. They're not chapters. A chapter is too big. A chapter a chapter of a book for me contains like fifty nuggets yeah. uh, that happen to be strung together into a chapter, and that if you could pull them apart, each of them should have support. And, you know, if you were to go like research them or, or look for them, each claim should have uh, it, its own support and its own, in some sense, independent life. It so happens that somebody has assembled that nugget of, of interesting information uh, into a chain. And then <clears throat> one last thing also, um, partly the, re and I think you said, hey, why don't I or we write the book about what's a neo book it, as a neo book? instead of me first writing uh, Design from Trust as a neo book, which is the thing I think I said that I was yeah. interested in doing. That was the sequence I was interested in. And it's partly because I wanted to create something that, that had substantive content in it rather than being meta content about the process of trying to write content. So, so when I say I want to write about Design from Trust, that's, that's its own lovely topic that I have a lot to say about that I'm trying to string together nuggets and narratives for Whereas a book about what's a neo book would be totally like self-referential. And in a sense, it would be a content, but it would be hard for people to distinguish. Well, this is just content about the people writing the process. This is, you know, I, I, I feel, I fear that that wouldn't prove our point as well as um, something that has different content in it. So um, that's my attempt to answer like three or three of the 12 questions you just posed. And I might've missed all of them. Well, at least you've got a recording of it, so we can go back and see Bingo. what it's anyway. Bingo. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, to, well, let me let me just clarify. Thing, it, it's both and. And first of all, I marvel at your your brain. By the way, I mean the the way you structure it, whatever. I think is phenomenal. You Thank know, you. it's it's you know something that I enjoy, but I'm not deeply invested in. But you've spent so much time and energy into that, so I I, I see it's a passion, um, and um, I see it as a resource, but it's not quite the way I think. Mm -hmm. Just the way you were talking a moment ago, um, you know this this whole issue of the 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 polarity between reductionism and holism, 
And, you know, are you a lump or a splitter? You know, do you see in patterns? Do you, you know, and it gets into all that sort of, um, you know, uh, fuzzy ground where people can get polarized in ways that aren't helpful. Um, but it gets back to the thinking of, uh, of, you know, thinking and doing, you know, and people who like to do more have an intolerance for thinkers and meta thinking and vice versa. And so the question is, where can you play a playground where, I mean, it could be concurrent as well. The only thing, my concern is if if you go off and do your, uh, whatever you want to do as your first book, uh, as, you know, and it's a circular process, and you want to do that, that's great. I mean, it could be concurrent as well. And, um, you know, people are going to come with different trajectories about where they want to go. So, you know, I broke down three areas, which is content, which I, when I'm hearing what it's predominantly about, process, which is really the how-to, and purpose, which is, which is the why. And, you know, that's just Simon Simic stuff, you know, or any other framework you want to use, but having different perspectives on that and how to orchestrate it. And at the end of the day, I, it's my, my, my preference is if we don't spend enough time looking at the meta governance level or the governance of the book, then, you know, people are just going to go off in their own, you know, mansplaining explanatory models and ways of thinking or whatever that may have some overlap and not overlap. And I think that's part of the problem. We've got too many people with their mansplaining and women'splaining frameworks, and we're not spending enough time to really understand what are the similarities and differences. And, you know, and I think it's hard work to try and do that because we get wedded in our own mindsets or worldviews. Um, and I think the beauty is how can you have a diversity of inputs in a way that you can create more of a meta framework that can ground people in different ways in different trajectories. So, for example, one idea is I, I, I'd like to see a book where it's co-authored all the time. It's not, you know, a small gr group that, you know, and this is where some of the tech things that you're, you're thinking about. Well, how does it become like a quasi, you know, wiki where there is some, some substance, but people can leap in and you know, contribute and add to it. And you have this constant evolving sort of body of understanding and wisdom where people can go in and, and dive into it and say, well, how does, how does, how does Jerry's brain tick or how does Jose's brain tick and what can I learn from their differences mm -hmm. or similarities? If that gets the gist of, uh, does that, this is just a, you know, only a quick response to your reactions. And, and let us both pause for a second, Jose, if, if, if you want to, um, you know, any observations you have on this particular conversation. Might be well, my, my, my struggle is not to this similar, um, though I think it's less about governance level questions, though I, I think that's a big concern. Uh, it's it for me. It's more of a um, a, a, a way to map what we're talking about because I think I think we've been thinking about this from the top down and not so much from the bottom up. And by the top down, I mean we want a book and it has nuggets. And, you know, it's written in this form and it's written in that form and then it's thus and it's, and I think we really, in my mind, we really need to wrap our heads around how we do this from the most composable element, which is in your terms nugget, and that that element has a protocol around it and that that element can be composed with other elements that have slightly different ways of being themselves um, that that a, an element that says I'm uh, a narrative and here is the claim and here is whatever that those elements are really the the starting point and I think we could do that with sheets of paper uh, you know like yeah. just literally cut a little piece of paper and say, okay, I'm the narrative, I'm the claim, I'm the this, I'm the that. Okay, how does this compose? Okay, fine. Now, we've got this thing. Now, how do we move that into something digital? How do we move that into something that is a platform? How do we move that into a an idea that goes beyond having a bunch of people writing on a wiki to a 
a set of protocols that provide us with the wherewithal to make this a thing. Mm -hmm. Because I think the thing isn't the book. I think the thing isn't how we end up putting them all together. I think the thing is the fact that it can be anything. It could be well, the images. Fact, it the could fact be... that it has a multiplicity of shapes and yet still kind of an essence, maybe. I mean, if it can be anything, it's just confusing and nobody's going to want to use it because it's like, oh my God, this thing this thing could be anything. Right, but, but what help. I mean is if the protocol allows for it to be anything, then somebody yeah. says, okay, this is the one thing that I like. Somebody says, no, this is the other thing I like and this is the other thing I like. Great. It has to end up being things, but it's not prescriptive from the beginning. And right. what I'm hearing is kind of we're prescriptive from the beginning. It's a book and it's, it's this and it's that and it's that. And then it happens to have nuggets in it. So kind of, I'm not sure I agree with that uh, in the sense of there's, an, there's a description, there's a, there's a rough impressionistic painting of this project, which is like, hey, people know what books are. Let's use books as bait. But really the interesting thing is these living, documenty, wiki-like nuggets where there's community and there's riffing and there and then and then people can take any shiny nugget and make something different out of it, which is great because that's exactly what we want. We want people engaged and thinking together. Awesome. Um, when I go and start writing nuggets about design from trust, I feel like I'm working bottoms up entirely. And when Pete and I make decisions about, okay, we're going to do markdown files on GitHub, blah, 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 and make some decisions that are too technical for most people, but that's also working bottom up. Like, hey, let's just let's just pick some details that that have features we like and start working from that that level, you know, back up. So it doesn't feel like this is all top down. It feels like the top down is a painting for what the environment maybe feels like and what our goals are. Now, separately, in calls mid pandemic, we spent six months working on something I call the generative commons agreement, which I've mentioned here before. And we were trying to come up with like, you know, when we're working together in a wiki-like um, uh, attitude or approach or intention, what are the ground rules? Who owns the IP? How does this all work out? How do we know when we're bought in? What do we know? You know, all those kinds of things. And we spent a good amount of time working on this and never came up with a finished uh, generative commons agreement. I believe I own generativecommons.org or something like that, because we thought once we publish it, we can just put it up someplace and then the footer at the bottom of my neo book would say uh, this is a cc0 and 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 under the generative commons agreement with a link to what that is boom shaboom all of a sudden some of the the things that rick is looking for would exist my experience though was we spent a lot of time in really great conversations trying to sort of invent something that would work and didn't get there and that's a that's a big time suck so I'm trying to figure out in the middle of all these things that I think are all necessary with none of us being paid a salary to do this, how do we cut our path to the best, quickest illustration of what a neo book, what, what, what the benefits of neo books could actually be to anybody or to society? What, what, how do we get to a payoff uh, feeling from anybody participating or, or going and stumbling across this project? What I mean by top down yeah. is that I think everybody working on this project, at least my impression of it, is saying, I'm working on my book. Right. Right. And and not, here's a nugget. And here's how that nugget, this, da, 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 da. whatever that definition of this nugget, how this nugget interplays with this other nugget, how this thing works. I would love to start from there as well. And, and that's what I mean by... Right, because we're we're so, writing a book. So the one I'm using, I my I unfortunately have two big priority projects for me at this point that have to trump some efforts. But the third one in my in my list is this video or something explaining uh, neo books. And the example I'm using is a, the the nugget <clears throat> called "Assume Good Intent," and that is a lovely concrete way, way to start. It is a principle for open source software. It is an operating principle for Wikipedia. It is one of the principles of something I call design from trust, which is why I care about it in my design from trust book. So I'm like, that is great. That that's like <clears throat> that that that's a very concrete place we can start. And I and I I haven't sort of talked about this much because I'm busy trying to figure out how does this fit, what what's the narrative, what what do I go on. But I'd be very happy to work on that together 
and to play that out in, in whatever ways you think organically that would that would lead to some roots and shoots uh, kind of coming out and connecting to other things. I think that'd be awesome. And and if you wanted to suggest an alternate starting point, no, I, I think that's uh, a great place to start. I'm all in, but but that to me is a very it's concrete, it's important, and I know already it plays a big role in several different big narratives. And there there are people who could contradict it and have opposing arguments and say, no, 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 the world is a dangerous uh, place. Nobody can be trusted. So you can't assume good intent. And then there's a whole conversation there, which is like, okay, great. We could we could even model that, present evidence, all the stuff that you're, you're thinking about. If I could just chime in on the discrepancy in your perceptions about top down or bottom up, to me, yes. it's interesting to, to, to listen to that. But I mean, to, to, to go back to uh, Jose's point, I mean, I'm thinking about an ecological perspective and each person is going to have different areas where they're going to have a propensity about whether it's meta, macro, meso, micro, nano, or whatever, you know? So, you know, to me, it's, 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 it's just an overarching framework. And um, let me just clarify where I'm coming. I feel like I've been working on primary care all my life and I've been working at the micro level all the time. And I'm saying, this sucks. You know, the reason why we don't, we don't have effective meta governance. So we do have to go up to the level. Now, people will have different areas where they want to invest their time because they're driven by some of their life issues where they felt it. My, my, my concern about focusing on nuggets is that in a post-truth world, nuggets don't matter. You can have the best integrity of information. It doesn't matter very much because the process sucks because nobody believes facts anymore. So unless you deal with the process of why people cannot incorporate nuggets, then you know you can have a lot more rational content to provide to people, but it's water off a duck's back when somebody is locked into their uh, you know um, amygdala limbic brain because they're driven by emotions and not rational feelings, which is where most of America is at the moment. And then you have to go to the purpose. So you know I understand the grounding, I understand the importance of it, but if one doesn't have an eye on the, the different domains where people may want to play. And thinking about, well, how can you integrate these things in a sort of ecological way? And if you don't have that framework, but I, I would still come back to your 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 um, your document. That I wouldn't say that was lost, what you were describing. I'd like to look at what you came up with, because that to me is a little bit of the substrate of the governance issues. Um, and, um, you know, it's it's just a question of, well, how can we sort of integrate our, our different... Um, will views in a way that we can we can find a sand pit where there's enough middle ground where we say hey i want to play in the sand pit because it's fun you know um, i'm going to put a link in the chat which is to my brain unfortunately but it's to no, that's okay no i i love your 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 ability to just pull these things out of the hat it's it's to the it's to the nexus of all the stuff that we did around the generative commons agreement it yeah. all the calls are there uh, each of the calls has my notes for each of the calls et cetera et cetera uh we did no. we we went for it for a while we you know spent a, a good hunk of time on that did you uh, did you did you actually synthesize it into a sort of executive white paper thing or is it just a a, a... Uh, a sort of a, a compendium of work that hasn't been synthesized. I don't think it's been properly synthesized. No, I think yeah. that that we had we we kicked around a bunch of important issues. We did a little bit of work on it, but we didn't we didn't collaboratively edit a document that we were even half uh, half happy with. You yeah. know, uh, which would be great. That would be great to have. Uh, for the, for the techies, which are the best AI tools to take that body of work and at least give a first draft of... of so uh, a very interesting thing would be to take the transcripts of all the calls we had yeah. and then a couple other documents that we have with intentions, feed it all as a corpus and then say, hey, would you come up with a generative commons agreement? That's a great idea. Yeah, simple. Yeah. I mean, why not use the technology? Yeah. At least give you the draft and then you can pull it apart. And, you know, you know, I... I, I personally am having a whale of a time on uh, using AI stuff just for bound, asking questions, pushing the limits of the questions you can ask. And it's sort of like, to me, it's more of like a, you know, a research assistant moves. And I, I'm finding it generates, it, 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 it enhances my ability to sort of bounce ideas or contradict things or whatever. So I, I, I think, you know, the whole process of an ebook is how to help people become more sophisticated in how they use AI.
you know, because uh, I'm interested in, in, in the whole notion of, of human AI synergies. Me too, big time. I mean, that, to me, that is the, that's the gold rush. That's what we should be doing too. And the problem is, I don't know, just just as a just as a sidebar, I mean, I was on a call yesterday with somebody who was talking about uh, meta AI and how that's going to disrupt. And I'm not a techie. I just, you know, I, I'm I, I'm a, a spectator of it. But the way they were talking about it was like, whoa, they're going to get 4 billion people who are going to be able to use meta AI. It's going to be all sort of, it's just going to become much more sophisticated. The dark side could get darker and people are selling their selves to the devil. I'm exaggerating. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and, and they don't even know what they're giving away. And, you know, it, it could disrupt the other AI you know, uh, platforms because it's available for free, apparently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, we, we don't, you know, um, we're just going to become uh, victims of uh, technocratic neoliberalism and only up the ante for techno feudalism. So, you know, love yeah. that. And, and, and by the way, the, the cyborg AI human fusion thing is the second priority I have, which is basically creating a, a presentation around exactly that. Like, well, you know, what does our cyborg future look like? So, oh, I, I, I see, you know, it's the good, the bad, and the ugly, and the bad always gets the best at the beginning. You know, the question is, can the good catch up on the bad fast enough and learn from, you know, the social dilemma stuff and all that sort of stuff and anxious generation, Jonathan Hyde's work on, how smartphones destroyed a generation. Yeah. I mean, that's exaggeration, but I mean, that's what he's basically coming out with. I think it's more complex than just putting it down. I think it's, I, I think he's re really oversimplifying, but boy, has he, oh, absolutely. Of, oh, boy, absolutely. has he caught a lot of attention. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, he's a media marvel and marketing marvel, and he's very sophisticated, but you know, there's, it's a complex phenomenon. It's not just that, it's this whole cascade of things that go around smartphones and how parents bring up their kids and let you know whatever you yeah know? but i mean there is some merit to reductionism but you have to see the limitations of it as well and what you said earlier about um hey the nugget's going to be worthless because there's people living in a post-truth world i agree with you and i agree with you that there are levels and metal levels and all that yeah. but i think that i think one of the ways to disable the post-truth world is to behave well and ethically and clearly in a relatively truthy world. I agree. And, it's and, so, and so the trustworthy party around the living nuggets, if that works well, then somebody who's like been convinced that there are no more truths, no more facts, might come into the eddies of that conversation and go, oh, okay, here are some people having a conversation around stuff that matters in a way that I can actually believe and might want to play with. And mm -hmm. there are some people who are so deep down their particular red pill or whatever rabbit hole they've got that they're probably unconvincible of anything else that and maybe for the rest of their lives. This is something that something that scares me a lot right now is that many people have been so taken with an alternate narrative that is all not right now connected, welded to their identity and their yep. sense of self and worth that those things cannot be pried apart. And my hope is that through love and patience and conversation and trust building and all that kind of stuff, you can actually sort of melt that over time. But I don't know how big the population is that that has gone so far in that direction that they can't come back into sensible conversation with disagreements. If I can just quickly add to that, I'm just listening to Adam Grant's uh, new book called Hidden Potential. Yeah. The, the bottom line punch, I won't go into the details, but he he's really focusing on something that's, you know, as, as old as philosophy. And that is the most important thing, according to him, and he goes into justifications, we need to focus on the development of virtues and character strengths. Mm -hmm. And that's the greatest failing in education. And the people who succeed are the people who succeed well, I should say, are the ones who are able to harness that. Um, so to me, if it is part of this human AI synergies, we have to look at, well, how can we use it in such a way that we enable people to become having acquiring minds so that they develop their own ability to become open-minded, truth-seeking, uh, free thinkers, you know? And if that's the objective of education, then we need to have better learning methods to be able to help people on their journeys and also provide remedial p classes for people who got so stuck in their rabbit hole that they, you know, 
you know, which is about 30% of the U.S. population. And I like what you're saying, but I would say this isn't about the education system and teaching these things. It's actually about life and la and living these yeah, things. Absolutely, I, I agree with you. We're, yeah. we're, I'm, I don't want I don't want to isolate this to schooling or education. No, 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 no not at all. It's if that's, bro work. if that's broken yeah. too. Yeah, well, it's lifelong intergenerational learning, yeah. but it has to be it has to be integrated. You know, um, so that you know the most important stuff that you learn about is outside of school. But how can school enable you to learn more from life? than it's currently doing, which it does a very poor job. So I'm in agreement with you on that one. Jose, you've been trying to interject for a little bit. Please do. Not really. Uh, I, I, I I understand Rick's point about uh, governance. My issue with governance is I don't know what to govern because I don't know what exists. At the moment, I don't see anything existing. How do you mean that? Um, I don't, I don't know of any nuggets. I don't know of what those nuggets look like. I don't so you know. Mean in, so you mean in this project, you don't mean the nihilistic, I don't think anything exists in the great world thing. I was just wondering no, no, no. At what level we were talking. Well, sorry. We're, we're in my mind, I'm trying to figure out if to, if right now we were to decide, let's talk about governance. Yeah. I wouldn't know what we're governing. Well, I think that's a really important part of the conversation about define, you know, defining an agreement, figuring out your your terms, like what 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 are the assets, and and then it, that opens up neighboring cans of worms about ownership versus stewardship and the commons versus private property and all of that because because if it's not owned by me, then what the hell is it, and where does it live, and who has responsibility for it? Is this funny fuzzy thing? It's like, well, hey, we're we're talking about the generative commons agreement which means we're trying to develop commons and they they have complicated social ownership they don't belong to a, a legal entity necessarily my sense is this is emerging whatever we call it new books or anything yeah. else yeah me too it's emerging it's going to happen right? sounds great um how it's going to happen by whom um that will you know that will reflect what will happen. Yes. Right? And so for me, the question for, for myself personally is, where can I put my time and effort into something that's going to make this happen sooner rather than later, better rather than worse, and beneficially rather than harmfully? You are speaking my language. Thank you. And so for for me, that's the that's the governance I need at and this if, point. And at if this I stage were, of the game. And if I were to find a different project that was doing exactly what you just said better than we are, I'd be like, let's stop having these calls and let's go join their their calls. So uh, there are projects that have pieces of the puzzle that they seem to be chewing on that seem complementary to what we're up to. But I'm trying to figure out how, like, where where is this happening, and how is it how is it going to find its way into the world? Because I agree with you that this is this is emerging. Yeah, and and I don't think there is an answer. Anybody has a, any of the answers. Collectively, has the answers, right? I think people are coming at it from different perspectives and aiming at the same center, but what they're doing stops way short of the center. Yes. And, and I'll, I'll just say, Rick, I'll pass it to you in just a sec. Um, I, I have a long history, like 30 year history now of seeing these kinds of things and describing them and not naming them properly and not not fulfilling the full vision of what's possible. But when I look back on my work just before the thing happened, I'm like, holy shit. I was I was you like, and me both, my friend. I was like you an Irish both. I was like an <laughs> Irish setter wagging his tail, pointing at the bush, going, There's a quail in there, damn it. <laughs> and and I, I was just calling it a crocodile, but it's a quail, right? Um, and, and so since we have these good instincts, and I think we're really interested in manifesting this in a way where, hey, wouldn't it be cool if our efforts to do this are the ones that catch on? How do we do that? Yeah, just, just to respond quickly to Jose, uh, the way I heard it may not be the way you intended it, which was the issue of governance. And what we're governing, 
And I think we have to deconstruct what we mean by governance because everyone comes with different, you know, you know what that means. Um, and, um, you know, and I'd be interested in your, you know, in your, your, the, the document you had on the generative commons, to what extent you actually delved into that in terms of, um, to what extent are we talking about self-governance and then collaborative governance and then deciding what, you know, the, the, the notion of governance has, you know, for many people, a negative connotation mm -hmm. because they see it as a top down somebody governing me and it violates the whole principle of autonomy so if you have that frame you're going to have a negative reaction to words so we have to look at what are the valence that people come to that mm -hmm. and if we don't define different forms of, of governance mm -hmm. such, we say that's a negative governance we don't want that this is a neutral and this is a positive form of governance um and then you know even taking it up a, a, a layer up and when you start thinking about what is the meta governance uh, you know, how, how, how can we develop meta government so we can deal with our meta crisis of systemic power abuse dynamics, which is going on all the time. So it's a question of languaging things in a way that we can at least be, uh, aware of the subtle frames that people bring to it. So that if I come, as you were describing a moment, Jose, and I, I, I'm responded negatively to your frame of, and even though you may not have meant it then we're going to have some disagreements about it until we clarify what the hell we're talking about. And sometimes people don't clarify that just as you and I, Jerry, a moment ago, were talking about education and that's what you, you saw in a different line. I said, no, 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 no. I, we're on the same side. We're just using languages that separate us when we have commonalities. So to me, this is one of the challenges of, of creating these sort of learning micro communities where you can actually replicate the conversation we're having now and that people become more sophisticated in how they take time to understand their different frames, clarify them. And, you know, the one thing about commons, and this may touch into your, your, your document is the extent to, I mean, I have some issues about talking about common ground because to me, common ground is, got, is a useful thing, but what it, what it doesn't take in consideration is our difference. It assumes more that we're in than we're out. Middle ground, and I've had circular arguments with people about the differences between common ground and middle ground, but you just have to clarify the terms so you can at least conceptually have some agreement. I think middle ground is, I find a more useful thing. So if the middle ground is sort of, this is the middle ground is the area where you can have on the one hand, shared knowledge, it's open to all, open access. Somebody can go into the middle ground and say, this is my proprietary thing, but I'm, I'm sharing it with you if you give me the acknowledgements for it. And then the people outside of that saying, I'm going to write off my book and try and make, you know, as much money as I can out of my book. And if you want to, you know, you can certainly access it. So I don't know what level of nuance your, you know, generative commons got into in, in addressing those issues. Speaking of which, it might be useful to add this conversation to the body of work you did to see what, what it comes up with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, also, in February of this year, I had I I created four separate calls. Uh, you guys were aware of them, and I think I think we're on a couple of them. Yeah, um, all about what do we mean by governance and what's working in governance. And they, eh, I don't know that we made that much progress on them. Um, I love the topic of governance, and I think it, it, it you know it needs to come from self governance, but we need to figure out how to do shit together yeah right and 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 um i we had trouble with the word governance interesting uh, one of those jose in particular had lots of trouble with the word governance well, because well, it seemed know, to be about power well it depends on what type of power is it power sharing power over power with and unless you clarify those things there's another group that i've just joined which you may already know about called medagov mm -hmm. and it's 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 an academic group of people who, and I've been going to some of their sessions and it's mm -hmm. it's fascinating, um, and um, you know they're you know published papers are very you know and I, I can understand about half of what they're talking about because some of yeah. this I, I get lost, but I'm getting the gist of what they're talking about. Um, but you know just because the 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 um, the the initiative was a failure doesn't mean to say that. There isn't something that can be learned from it, and why did it fail? That's to me the more important question. Why? Did, why isn't it able to emerge something where, um, you know, 
uh, Jose left feeling it was a waste of time. So why was it a waste of time? We got to understand our differences to be able to say, why was it a waste of time? Yeah, that's not the words I would use necessarily, but um, but yeah, I, I think your point. You're right. muted. Rick. No, I, I, you just, I was just embellishing a little bit. That's mm -hmm. all. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, understood. Uh, I think the conversation around governance is an obvious, important conversation. It isn't personally where I would start. Um, I think until I know what we've got to govern, until I know what we have that wants to be built or not be built, um, I don't know what my role is and my interest in it is and my ability to participate or not participate or interest in, in doing so. I think that when we build the new technologies, um, and this is more for you, Jerry. All too often, we carry our, our technological baggage with us. And so we end up trying to do something new with old. Right. And I think this is a situation where we have to build something new with new. And how, how new? Because there isn't, when I look around, there's not much that shows up as actually new. It's always something that somebody had done that got reframed, done a little bit better. Everything, and... everything's a reframe of everything, yeah, right? It suddenly shows up. Um, but it's, and uh, trust me, I was, uh, you know, wiki geek back in, in the early 90s. Uh, I was hoping know. we would all be writing with each other in wikis, that that would be a thing, and it's not a thing. And it won't be. Why not? Um, because we've gone past that. I'm there sure, may I, have been. I'm not sure we've gone past it. Pete's thesis is that it's too difficult for people. That people aren't that skilled. I think it's both that, and and we've gone past it because it never kept with the style of reading and writing that has evolved over the last 20, 30 years. You mean TikTok? Um, TikTok. I think Instagram is a, symptom, uh, is a symptom of something, but it's not the end state of how. I'm not saying it's the end happen. state, but it, it, I think everything is a movement. Yeah. And we've calcified wikis in a state. And, and for the most part, wikis haven't really moved beyond that state. Right. And, and I think that, you know, I look at my 20 something stepdaughters. And I say, well, there's the wiki there. They go, yeah, okay. And they roll their eyes because, you know, they all had them in school and they all hated them and they were useless. And they it was just a place for them to go fight about something and whatever. And then they moved on, hmm. right? And it's like, oh, I remember that wiki that the teacher had. And I remember that wiki that we had that project in. And, yeah, yeah. You know, there there isn't any goodness in wikis for anybody under the age of 30. Um, I mean, th they value Wikipedia just as the rest of the world does, but they don't value the wiki. Right, right. Right. What do they value for collaboration? Uh, instance. Just, just being able to do something instantaneously. It emerges, they do it, it happens, it's done, it's good. Now, does it have longevity? Yes, it does. Okay, great. Now we can search, we can find it. We can reuse it. It's it. There is no like even the document writing and and uh, Google Docs. For them, it's like I see my stepdaughter like create a document every thirty seconds. It feels like, mm -hmm. right? She just spin one up, write something. Spin another one up, write something. Mm -hmm. like, whoa! Like what the hell's going on here? Now. Google Docs obviously doesn't do any instant linking. It doesn't create any graphs. It doesn't do any of that stuff. Right. But I think that's closer to the world that we need to create this new type of technology for. I think we want to create nuggets for that kind of mentality that instantly provides for the ability to go deep, 
not because they will go deep instantly, but because the linking and the and the depth that is possible will be a small percentage of the stuff that's created rather than, you know, every single piece of thing has to be done that way. And if we write at the technology level, if we think that everything is going to be deep and a book, that's why I was kind of using the word meme for a little bit there when we were talking about this some yeah. time ago, um, is that the, the meme itself, I think, is the important thing. And for us to understand that maybe the concept of a meme is the thing that could be the nugget that we can embellish and add structure to protocols around that would give us that. So this, I'm not saying I have the answers. Yeah. I'm just, to me, exploring that is, has more legs at this stage of the game. Um, a small digression, which is there's there was a site back in 2018 called You Need a Wiki, which mm -hmm. basically you give it your Google Docs ID, your Google Workspace ID, and it then wraps wiki capacities around Google Docs, which everybody knows how to use. And I, I just went and looked at the website and this damn thing is still alive. <clears throat> and I, I don't know if they're making any money or anything like that. And I don't think I ever contacted the founder, but I'm curious what their lessons were from that. Then separately to what you just said, you're making me realize that the vision, at least in my head, is incredibly inclusive. So little TikTok snippets and whatever else, because when I say assume good intent, that could be as short as somebody's one minute riff or 30 second riff on what they think it means or how they use it or blah, 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 blah. I don't care. And that would fit very nicely into this constellation of nuggets wired together to each other for different contexts and different media, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Part of what I'm saying is, I think part of what I think I'm saying, which isn't explicit, is I don't think long form media are dead. And I don't think that we're just gradually evolving to like wall E type people with with shrunken skeletons from idi and idiocracy type idiots who don't care about facts or anything like that. I don't think humanity is sort of inevitably being dragged downhill into that world. I think that we haven't figured out how to think together well yet. And and we're and, and our media are stuck in old school metaphors of what media meant to look like. Kind of a riff on what you just said about how we bring our baggage, our, our, you know, the old school baggage along. And what I'm trying to figure out is what is a creative space within which we can reinvent how we think together look like, borrowing from but not being wedded to older things like wiki technology and so forth, but now go riffing and going somewhere new. And that's why I invited uh, Rich burden to come in a couple weeks ago and explain his uh, uh, composer software, which he did in a in a free Jerry's brain call, I think. I don't think it was in, in the NeoBooks call. But he basically demoed a platform he's been working on for years. He has funding for this thing. Um, oh, it was a free Jerry's brain call because then um, one of our members in free Jerry's brain was like, yeah, but it's doing this thing to links. So it's, they're not really permanent links. And he just bagged, he just like, Tra trashed it and i'm like no wait a minute wait a minute there's something really valuable here because it had all the benefits of wikiness which is collaboration version control all that kind of stuff without pushing crap to github etc cetera, etc cetera. and it, it was on a platform of distributed objects and it did a bunch of really really cool stuff i'll, I'll put a link to that call in the chat uh, and in the notes um because i i was like well okay if we like this, why don't we run with this? And Pete and I started building a couple of documents on the platform, but we never made it a bigger practice and we haven't really gone back to it. Um, so I guess partly what I'm saying is there are a bunch of experiments with what this thing might look like and where it could go that are brand spanking new. You know, Rich's platform is barely, barely open to the public. He just, just launched it, right? I have no idea where it's going to go. And any investment in a platform means you're not investing in other platforms or you, you might get stuck down the road. We're all very, all too familiar with that. <laughs> um, but I'm weirdly, after all of this, optimistic that we can find our way there. And I feel like I've been pecking this thing to death uh, in all, all, you know, all sorts of different ways with a little bit of progress on all fronts and no big progress on any one front where I can be like this thing over here. And it's frustrating. 
and just chime in, I say, on something you said about, um, you know, your your uh, step daughters and how they're using it. Now, I'm, I'm extrapolating, and I'm sure this is not the case, but, uh, you know, I see this in my grandson a little bit, which is, you know, you, you can go into the AD, ADD world of superficial games, sucks your attention, and the objective of the governance of that system is to buy, is to keep your attention for nefarious purposes. That's not good governance. On the flip side of that is, well, how can you actually create things along what we were talking about earlier, Jerry, about, well, how can we, how can we actually uh, create inquiring minds so that people are, are basically, you know, in charge of, of, of you know, deciding what they want to learn and what outcomes they want to learn, with whom they want to do it, how they want to do it, and have an enjoyable time doing it. Um, and I mean, this is something that you know, Jonathan Haidt talks about and other people have as well, which is, you know, boys who are being educated, uh, or miseducated, I should say, uh, on the superficiality of games get sucked into that rabbit hole and come out, you know, socially inept and black drive because they're just, you know, playing games all the time. So, you know, that again comes back to the good, bad, the ugly. So how can we harness in such a way that people are, you know, using effectively in a proactive way that they're governing their own destiny in collaboration with other without being, you know, uh, taken in by meta AI or by spin meisters or whatever, yeah. whatever. Um, a couple of things. Uh, we didn't record the call with Rich on purpose because he was just launching and he said, I don't really want this out. Um, but he, you can go to composer.dxos.org and you can build a document. You don't really need a, to be verified with an ID. You'll just sort of, you'll just sort of have capacities in using the platform. And I can share with you a couple of documents that, you know, Pete and I created or something like that. They're not, nothing, nothing very fancy, but it's a full singing, full dancing platform within which third parties could write more sophisticated plugins. Basically, he called them frames that would live on the platform. So you could imagine a brain frame. In fact, the whole platform was originally called brain frame, uh, F-R-A-M-E, uh, B-R-A-N-E frame, I think, uh, because he envisioned that somebody would do a mind mapping plugin for this whole thing where the nodes in the mind map would be useful as objects for any other plugin. That makes sense. Mm. Um, I just want to go back to yeah. thank you for that, and and I would like it if you could share some of your docs. I'd appreciate that. Um, Rick, I I agree that making people dumber is not the objective here, right? That that and and I'm not suggesting that people who are you know, mindlessly stuck on games or mindlessly stuck on social media are are the people that we're you know that we need to cater to or or that we need to to um, to serve that bad behavior to, for lack of a better word. Um, what I do think is that as technology has become easier, that the human mind's desire for simplicity gets served very well. And that the idea of reading a 300 page book and trying to wrap your head around that 300 pages is as we see by the evidence of, of the number of books that actually get read fully um, is, is actually not great. Right. And so understanding that if you know I, I see the girls go and find a youtube they'll watch it they'll link to something else they'll find something else and before you know it you know 20 minutes of, of searching and link, linking and clicking and watching and whatever they've got a recipe an answer to how it's going to be done we don't have this thing and how we're going to do it they come up with answers that they wouldn't be able to find in any other way. And when we were kids, there was no answer. To me, that composition of information in a way that is that seems ad hoc and um, unstructured and small 
is is really what is missing here is that we need the glue that brings these pieces together in a more sane way exactly and that this sane gluing could amount to being a book mm -hmm. but but that's not the goal it's the gluing of these not of these bits of knowledge a piece of what i hear you saying jose is that for some people maybe and maybe this is a really large segment of the population there will not be any permanent web of knowledge there will not be any matrix of fixed things that they rely on even like wikipedia but rather everything will be evanescent everything will be a search of the instant for a small solution to a local question and that will be perfectly fine i think that when google started to build their data set they thought they were building the world's biggest database that everybody could just go in there and find right and then they realized oops that's not really what we're building we're we're building relationships between things we're not building a data set we're building a relational graph well there's the knowledge graph and the guy who invented the technology they bought is danny hillis um, who regrets that they bought it and privatized it and has a different project to try to create an open graph again, right? Which is, I don't see it making a lot of progress, but I had a conversation with him mid-pandemic about all, about this. Um, but, 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 but I think you're saying that there might not be, maybe there's, maybe the graph is behind the curtain and is needed so that you can find the right little shiny nugget at any, at any time. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. But but we're not going to see we the build, graph. Not, if we build things it. with the graph in mind, then we have a as as producers, then we have a better chance that the stuff we offer has built into it directional vectors to the stuff that's important, rather than it being a a nugget that that the presenter Google gets to choose who, what the next link is rather than the author. So if I give you a nugget that all the content is just whatever I wrote in there or whatever video I created or whatever image I produced and Google gets to present that to you, you look at it and you go, well, where do I go next? And Google says, well, here's a link and here's a link and here's a link and here's a link. And the message that I was trying to, to provide is lost for sure but if i can say here's a nugget that i've just given you and from this nugget here's a bunch of links that's the goal that to me we're we're in the world of fragmented data but building into it some meta structure graph that is built into the data itself and that that data then is open, not only that I was able to disseminate it, but that mm -hmm. other people can actually get access to it and, and add to that graph. I feel I should just, just for grins, mention the big fungus idea here, because that that's what, that's what I'm hoping the big fungus is sort of like. It's like, there are lots of people metabolizing information, sending shoots out toward each other, connecting it up loosely, organically, sometimes in more, in more bigger clusters of nutrients. Um, sometimes the shoots come up above the soil and turn into mushrooms and you can harvest those and eat them. And that's what a, a media object would look like. But the interesting thing is happening underground with all these little connections and it's messy, evanescent, uh, shifty over time. I don't know, mm -hmm. something like that. But that, that's so, yes. the goal of using that metaphor. Hmm. Just to, to, to chime in here a little bit, uh, so what you just described about the functional aspects of it and, you know, the whole notion of having to go through a 300 page book. I mean, I think people knowing that most people don't read their books, you know, what is the other ways of getting people involved in such a way that they want to, you know, and it depends upon the type of book, whether it's a novel or whether it's fiction or whatever. And if they want to dive into something, particularly if it's nonfiction, um, you know, they want to go to the information that they most need as quickly as possible without having to read the whole book. Um, so, I mean, I think one has to 
you know, clarify the, the, the content area um, that people are focusing on. So, I mean, I thought it was a good example of, yeah, that's, that's highly functional. Uh, there's things that are non-functional. There are things that over time are highly dysfunctional. So there are huge fan bases for Game of Thrones, uh, oh, Lost, uh, yes. what have you. Like me, people eat very, very long media and have no problem piecing together the plot, the connections, coming back and doing analysis on it. Like, like it's not that people are late, too lazy to read a 300 page book. There, mm -hmm. That energy has gone maybe to other media. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe maybe the book is just obsolete, which is a thing I don't believe quite yet. Um, but it's not that people are too lazy to understand very big, complicated, like Russian novel plots mm -hmm. and, and have insights about them. Yeah. But they'll do it sometimes about the most, like the Kardashian clan. I'm pretty sure you can find a bunch of people who have never read a book, but could tell you down to jot and tittle like what each member of the kardashian clan has done eaten bought uh who they've they've slept with whatever else it is um to a degree that would be astonishing yeah that's a world of trivia but you know if people thrive on trivia that's great i mean it's but well i think i think our collective shared goal here is to drag people out of the world of, of doing that for things that are meaningless or evanescent in evanescent and meaningless and back into a world of, Hey, if you use that same set of skills on stuff that matters to you and your community, you could actually make life better for everybody. Yeah. Same set of skills. The skills are there. That, this is something I'm actually firmly convinced of that the skills we're worried about are actually there. They've just been sublimated, uh, replaced, uh, substituted into crazy ass, stupid things. We Which think are skills are you referring to? analytics absorbing large bodies of work seeing connections pattern finding commentary all those things because i think they're there in the other patterns in the in the kids patterns yes but they're, they're, i think they're, they're there in spades in the but kids they're there and that's well that's kind of what i'm saying but they're showing up as these little tiny evanescent they're showing up almost like um an atom smasher like the nuclear the bubble chamber where you see that that you know, a muon just shot through, and and there goes a, a, a scion. Imagine a kid today, in high school, being asked to read a book that they can ask ChatGPT to tell them what the book's about. Exactly, it was here. It's here now. Yeah, I mean, they, and they're, that's how they're doing their homework. So the problem there is. So how do we? They'll never how understand. Do we force the them to read a whole book. Uh, we entice them to read a whole book by some other means that leads them back to wanting to see the original material. But is the intent of a book? And, and I'm, I don't know the answer. Yeah, yeah. My my sense is the intent of a book is to take a handful of ideas and impart them to someone else. It became we have to sell a book. Mm -hmm. And in order to sell a book, it needs to have this many pages. And and so now what was five ideas is turned into a 350-page book in order to freaking sell the book. And So of... now if I'm a kid, yeah. a young person who's like, I just want the ideas. I just want the ideas. What are the ideas? Give me the ideas. That's very neo-booky what you're saying right now. Like, how do we liberate the ideas to do their work in the world in the most efficient form possible? Love that. And that's it. And, I, that. and I think the idea, though, Jerry, that, that the book itself, I need to read the whole book. I don't, I'm not saying yeah. that. But, but, like, if we're trying to keep the same old patterns of book reading and you know, people long form and da, da 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 It makes the assumption that that's what it is, that that we have to do that. No. Um, books are a convenient cultural artifact that lets us have some kind of anchor in the world of history and what happened that we don't need to worry about how they're produced. I'm, I would rather liberate the ideas in a book and then figure out 
who wants to use subsets of them to make arguments for different things in the world? That'd be great. You know, if you want to read Jonathan Haidt about the anxious generation, he points to research, da, 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 da. he makes a bunch of arguments, some of which I would agree with and some of which I think I really disagree with. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I want to be able to have those conversations. And I want to make those conversations handy so that when parents are sitting over dinner with their neighbor friends, and they're all talking about what to do about the kids in their media, they have something to draw on that is compelling and useful. But that, that's a context I really care about. You know, I just just what you just triggered for me, Jerry, was uh, was the whole notion of well, as as it takes a while, even as a parent, to curate the sort of things that you think would be really useful for your kids. You know, if it, it it is here, but do you know of any resource that actually guides parents on the effective use of social media along the lines that we're talking about? Is there? There are a know, bunch of really good efforts on. Um, Yes, there's a bunch of efforts that have gotten um, really good. Let's see if I can get toward it. Um, let me find stuff and send you a, a note. But... Helpful because, you know, yeah. I mean, it, it applies to so many other things. It's like, you know, if kids want to learn math, they want to learn how to play chess. The one thing that actually came out of the book, uh, a very interesting example, which was sort of, um, there's a story in the book that uh, by Adam Grant where they had sort of Ivy League schools. Uh, you may have heard this story. Ivy League schools competing for the best chess team. And there was this Jamaican um, chess master who worked with kids from Brook Brooklyn. And these were kids who took up the game late. You know, these are, you know, preppy kids, you know, start from the age of five. So, so. And he started training these, uh, you know, young teens on how to play chess. The strategy was fascinating because where he started off was not how to play it, but he started teaching them about the end game. So in other words, you know, when you start a game, you don't know what the end game is. And, you know, just with my grandson, I'm thinking, you know, I'm trying to cheat him how to play chess, but do we ever finish a game? Well, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't, you know, uh -huh. it's kind of, but the interesting part is the end game. That's what you're getting to. So he started training them on the end game with set pieces to know how to make chess mate, you know, oh. checkmate. Uh, anyway, he took this team, and it's such an remarkable story that should be made into a movie, actually. And he took this, you know, you know, this, 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 the, these uh, young kids from Brooklyn, black kids from Brooklyn, and they won the tournament. And it was just mind blowing. I mean, just there is a movie about that, by the way. Is there really? Oh, good. I'm glad that there is. What's it's the a movie? Hispanic teacher, so I don't know if it's the same thing, but it's black kids, and they are all actually uh, still involved in the community. Yeah, I'd love to know the name of that one because I'd like to I'd like to share with my I, I was I was listening into the car and I was uh, my grandson became interested so we started chatting about it and I thought this is a movie. I don't know if you can uh Jerry's wizardry hopefully will be able to find that movie for us. I was just looking at some of the stuff that I've got but uh Checkmate the black schoolboy now that's about one. No, critical thinking. Critical thinking. Oh, is that the name of the... That's the name of the movie. Is it a movie? Oh, oh wow. Cool. 2020. Uh, oh, cool. It's uh, it's actually not from New York. It's from uh, a Miami high school. Well, it may be uh, another story, actually. This one was definitely from Brooklyn, so it's yeah. sort of parallel. Actually, the, the other question I put Thank in you. there, I, mean, I, did a, uh, I, I did go to CIA and just generated, and that is, what is the difference between... Similarities and differences between meta governance and governance, uh, and I, you know, it, it would take me a little while to, uh, you know, delve into that. But I would add that into the mix of the generative common stuff um, because I think it is important to make a distinction. Now, um, you know, p some people uh, have such an an ab reaction even to the mention of the word meta for different reasons, um, but you know, they just, you know, they just, you know, it just turns them off. Um, and, um, you know, if it does, that's it. But actually I I'm intrigued about metacognition and how we can go meta more effectively so that we can build up, um, the infrastructures for more effective, uh, uh, systems. So. By the way, Jerry, your document, it is not loading. It says nothing found. Oh, really? Cause yeah. I went to the, I went to the link and it finds me fine. Uh, can you go to the uh composer.dxos.org right there and just see if it has if it lets you 
sign in or create an account or something like that? I'm, I'm able to see the, uh, you know, the composition page. I think I have to invite you to the page, actually. Sorry, let me. Did you create? Uh, hmm. I didn't create anything. I just saw that I could create something. And then I clicked on your yeah. uh, link. Um, and your link is, is it's trying to load. And then it says nothing to load. Oh. It says initially it says object not available and then it says loading requesting object yeah is being synchronized and then it says no object available fascinating and i've forgotten the usage model um can you try clicking copy that whole link because the whole thing isn't getting highlighted properly by the zoom chat paste that into a browser and then see if that gets you anywhere that's an invitation code to the document because it could be that the i need a verification code from not sure it just says it. enter the verification code uh, joining space oh uh three one seven four three eight yep you're in And so this is the document you've created already. And we didn't do, we were mostly playing, uh, we were doing multi-user commenting and stuff like that into the document. So we didn't create a lot of notes from the, the call, unfortunately. And, and is this, uh, but yes. Is this sort of your latest technological experiment? This platform is Rich Burden's latest yeah. technological experiment. Yes. And, and but it was, your use of it as an experiment. Uh, yes. It was a platform I had a lot of hope for in what we're trying to get done. But unless several of us start using it, um, it's not going to make that much sense. And I think Burden would be very happy to have us use it. So what was the last three digits? Oops. Um, I, I generated an invite for just one person. So you're going to need a new invite. Okay. That's why I couldn't. Uh, which, yeah, I, 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 it, it lets you invite one person or several. So try this one. And then uh, the number is, yeah, try that. And then tell me when you're looking at the prompt. All right. I'm at the prompt now. Uh, good. Huh. On the last one, it turned into a number to tell you. Are you getting a little dialogue that says, hey, tell me what the code is? Uh, it just says um, type an invitation code. That's, why should I be getting a type an invitation code into it? Because for the last thing we just did, I this my little prompt here turned into an invitation court code, oh. uh, but now it's not. Huh. Huh. I got one where it it you know you had to put a number and I put the number in and it, and it didn't open. Yeah, but that, that that was a number for just one person. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. So that's why that bonked. But it, I just we just did it again, so we sh should have gotten a new one. But I'm not seeing a number here. Sorry about that. No problem. And, and I'm gonna have to leave the call shortly because I'm on a podcast in a couple of minutes. So I need to do a little bit of prep. Yeah, I need to go try to grab something to eat before my twelve o'clock as well. So, hey, this is really useful. Thank you guys. Yeah, so I, I look forward to the summation of your generative commons things and whether this actually contributes to it. And I, I think it is worthwhile, um, you know, it, you know, people have inclinations for different areas, but uh, I'm interested in the interface between meta governance and governance. So it, it's I know, Jose, it's not your cup of tea, but, you know, if we can. Uh... No, it really is my cup of tea. I just. Oh, is it really? OK. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In a very different way, but uh, okay, yeah. that's fine. Well, conversation to be continued. Okay, excellent. Cheers, guys. Okay, Thanks, nice. guys. All right, bye now.